Hey everyone, I'm Brad from Calgary. This is Sean from Cambridge, Ontario. I'm Terry from Cornwall, Ontario. Hey, this is Larry from Pitt Meadows, British Columbia. And you're listening to the Towing Life Podcast. Welcome to the Towing Life Podcast, where the ditches are deep, the trucks are loaded, but the drivers are not. I am your host, Towman G, and as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, friend, and former co-worker, a man with very strong opinions, Mr. Plain Guy. What is going on, G? What is going on? Oh, it's a beautiful Sunday night when we're sitting down to record, and it's just been a rainy, miserable day out. And yes, rainy. It's not snowing. It's raining. Yep. I, I don't remember what snow looks like. It's been so long, but uh, I do feel you on the, the rain. It's been the strangest day down here. It was overcast. Okay, it's going to rain. We get the dog out for a walk. Everything else, we get back. It's sunny. Where are they go? I thought it was supposed to rain. Then it's sunny and pouring rain. <laughs> and then it's overcast and not raining. And then it's sunny again and raining again. And it's just, it's been a weird Sunday. It was nice uh, to get caught up in the house while the rain was going on. I made um shout out to all my American friends because you can't find it in Canada very much. I made some homemade cornbread today. Nice. It turned out very good. Uh The only thing I could not figure out is it didn't brown at all on the top. Mm. Brown on the like the bottoms, but not on the top. Um, mm. neither, nonetheless, it was delicious. It was uh, my wife was doing groceries. Do you need anything? I said, I want to make cornbread. So the only thing that I was missing, because it's really not that complicated of a recipe, <laughs> mm-hmm. was yellow cornmeal, mm-hmm. which gives it the I had white cornmeal. I just didn't have yellow cornmeal. Did you do it in the oven? Yeah. We're, we're, do you have a where else? You're supposed to do it. <laughs> Well, I don't, some people do it on, like, the barbecue. You can make cornbread on a barbecue? It. Yeah. Um, but do you have a convection oven? And if so, no. did you have the fan on? No, I have a poor person oven. <laughs> and... If you have a convection uh, oven, you can get the top to brown up a little bit better. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it, it turned out perfect. The timing, the recipe was good. It was it was moist. It wasn't super dried out, not crumbly. It was It's perfect. Um, the only thing I probably could have added, I think next batch would actually have some some whole corn in it, like some actual mm. corn in it. A mm. um, little bit of extra flavor, texture. Yeah. It was, like I said, it was delicious. I, I love it. I don't get to have it nearly enough. Um, I know when I go down to the States, I always try and find a place with some decent cornbread, yeah. um, which I was down in the States this week. And did you I have did it not. with honey butter? No, we just, I didn't even put anything on it. I like it just plain. <laughs> I realized how much i'm out of shape lately mm. and i really do have to work on getting back into shape yeah rounds is um, shape so just oh round is a shape. i'm not i'm not that old we've gone over this i'm not that old but lately for whatever reason because of holidays and whatnot i have been in the office more than i've been on the road mm-hmm. and when you're used to you know when you spend so long long on the road you can kind of get away with eating junk because you're still staying physically active When Mm. your diet doesn't change, but your physical output does. Yep. Man, do you feel it? And we had a recovery this week. Not a recovery. I can't even call it a recovery. A truck came onto an off ramp and lost part of its load. It was a tarp flat, like a flat deck with a tarp rolling system on it. And it was Mm -hmm. like steel pieces. And we had to, and it spread them all into the ditch and then, you know, he lost the top layer of his load. So we were, you know, we man, you know, we manhandled, we, uh, we hand bombed everything. And I was out there throwing these pieces and I don't know, they probably weigh 10 pounds, 15 pounds, and probably about 50 of them out in the ditch. And we're taking them and throwing them back up onto the shoulder, yeah. just keeping them in a pile so we can come by with a roll off truck. And holy <laughs> Jesus, when I got done that, I took a knee on the side of the ramp hmm. and I was like, I am... I'm out, I'm out of shape. Yeah. I am. I am very badly out of shape. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've got a, I've got younger, I got no kids, but younger nieces and nephews. My sister asked me, Hey, do you want to come play hockey for the kids versus parents game or whatever? Cause neither of them play. And I'm <laughs> oh, sitting there going boy. like, Oh my God, I don't know if you're going to get it. beat by 12 year olds. I'm going snowboarding this week and I don't know if I'm like how my legs are going to hold up. And I'm, I'm really realizing that, you know, I'm not that old, but I really got to start making some changes to the stuff I'm doing because it's going to, uh, the towing industry is very easy to catch up 
to you, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean, right? One day you're 25 and enjoying the shit out of it. The next day you're 45 and wondering why every joint and, and muscle in your back hurts. Every day so. at Timmy's and McDonald's for lunch it hasn't helped, but you're like, I'm outside and I'm active every day. Exactly. So you put that into an office, it doesn't go over very well. So anyways, that's my uh, plain guys getting old rant of the day. <laughs> And uh, before we get too far into the episode, it is a great time to mention where can you find us? We always love your questions, comments, concerns, stories for the show, all of that good stuff. We can't thank our listeners enough for coming in week in, week out, whether it be over on the audio side or on YouTube. Um, You can find us at www.towinglife.ca. You can email us directly at thetowinglife at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at the Towing Life Podcast. And if you're watching over on the YouTube side, do not forget, head down below, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, follow, make sure you click all the buttons that you see on your screen. It's a free way to help the show, and it does really go a long way in supporting us. Sure does. Are you clicking a pen over there? I was for a while. Can you hear it the whole time? Yes, I could hear it, and it was driving me bonkers. That's perfect. That's my my ADD playing with things. Um. <laughs> Thank you for putting it down. Good boy. I just, I just threw the pen. I need a new pen. I need a quieter <laughs> pen. Where's my quiet pens? Um. So no, as I'm sure G probably played in the pro uh, the the preempt up to this episode. Um. I did a nice little trip this week. I uh, I wanted to get out of the office. I needed a mental health trip as we like to call them. And I got a call to so working in... is now mental health trips. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Driving is definitely compared to being in the office. A day <laughs> out on the road is a mental health. Uh, so break. doing your normal job of what you've been used to be doing is now a mental yes. health break. hundred percent. How times 100%. have changed. I know. So we got a call from a customer looking to get a vehicle moved up from the wonderful state of Vermont um, up into Montreal. So they called us up. Would you guys be willing to help this help us out? No problem. I took a beautiful scenic route through Vermont on the way down. Mm-hmm. I did realize that no offense to anyone in northern New York, and I'm talking like border northern New York, like border with Canada, especially mm-hmm. on the east end of it. It's a shithole. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely. I seen like full on towns where like every building looks dilapidated and, 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 you know, should be the 2008 financial crisis did not do them very good. (sighs) No kidding. So yeah, it was an interesting drive through there. Got into Vermont, took this awesome highway two through these islands in Northern Vermont, like down this hole through a town called hero and, and different things like that. Very beautiful area. Really enjoyed the drive. Still a little old and run down, but a nice drive. And uh, picked up the car down in Vermont, the wonderful folks over at you know, IAA or wherever it was down there, and brought it up to Canada. Mm. Well, the journey began, and the fun was had once I got into Quebec. Mm. So I'm not as bad as the next guy that we're going to talk about. But I did have a wonderful um, encounter with the Sûreté de Québec, um, which is the police and MTO version in Quebec. I'm coming up a highway, and it's a, a highway interchange. Two two highways meet. Yeah. And I'm coming up, and I'm the only truck around, and I'm governed, and I'm on my cruise control, and I start coming up to the highway and curves up a hill a little bit, and I see a cop pulled over on the right shoulder. I go, oh, shit, I'll move over. I got room to do so. Mm-hmm. Turn on my left blinker, move into the fast lane. Soon as I do, he hops out of his car, lights on, and aggressively points at me to pull over. Now, I'm shocked at this point. I don't know what I've done. We're not mm-hmm. talking distracted driving. We're not talking any of that. The phone's mounted on the dash. Mm-hmm. The you know, as far as I know, I don't know what the hell is going on. He and likes he, your pretty he, truck, and he wants to get a he, picture. Yeah, exactly. So he and he asked me to pull over into a spot where there's literally nowhere to pull over. Mm. So I try and like there's another ramp that comes around and merges. So I pull into that little you know that little cutout, yep. and he's parked in the lane to be able to come up and talk to me. And I'm like, I, like, I don't know where you want me to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was very aggressive about where he wanted me to pull over. <laughs> so he comes up and he grabs my in for me. I give my license and my binder and he says, where are you going? I tell him the town I'm going to. And he says, okay, so get on the ramp here to get around the, you know, onto that highway. And once it straightens out, pull over there. There's, there's room to do so. No problem. 
mm-hmm. and we pull over there and he, uh, he comes out and he tells me, he goes, uh, he asked for all my paperwork, right? He wanted my inspection. He yeah. wanted my hours, everything, everything checked out. Everything was up to date. Mm-hmm. And he said, did you not see the speed limit change? And I said, mm-hmm. no, sir, I did not. Mm-hmm. And I go, what did it change to? Yeah, because that's going to depend on how this interaction is going to go. 100%. And he tells me 70 kilometers an hour. Oof. And you're governed at 105. 100% I'm governed at 105. And I know I was on the cruise when I came up to it. Like, I do not deny, Mm -hmm. you know, um, if if this were to ever come up in court, I do deny wholeheartedly. And this is completely (laughs) satirical. Um... (laughs) But I don't deny that I was, you know, I, I was beaten. And I told him, yeah. like, I honestly, I didn't see it. I apologize. Yeah. I haven't had a ticket in six years, seven years. My last mm-hmm. ticket I got while I was on my way to ask my now wife's parents for permission to ask their daughter to marry me. Mm-hmm. That was my last ticket I ever got. And it was a speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. And it was like 15 kilometers over. I'm talking 37 now or 35, really. Mm-hmm. And this cop gave me zero. This wasn't a reduction. Mm-hmm. This wasn't, okay, I'll put you in at 95 in a 70 or I'll put you at 100 in a 70. No, mm-hmm. this guy decided, wrote on his paper 107, which I'd like to know where the 107 came from because I'm governed and it was uphill. So I know yeah. that I wasn't doing 107. Well, you know, the speedo in our vehicles isn't, specifically calibrated like it is in their cruisers well i can tell you my computer shows me at 105 my gps right because it tells you your speed on your cruise Mm -hmm. when i'm locked at 105 shows me 104 Mm. i can't you know i can't anyways it ain't gonna it's if i even if we were 105 in a 70 it's not doing me any extra favors no um, so yeah, he was nice enough to, uh, give me a ticket to the Quebec Sûreté ball. Um, I get to pay my, pay my respects to the province by, uh, by paying their ticket, yeah. providing we don't fight it. Um, and yeah, it was, it's a shitty day. It was a shitty mm-hmm. moment. You, you realize that you just spent a day working for free. Yep. Right. At the end of the day, after paying the fine, and I'm not overly concerned about the fine to be honest it's more the points right as we all know like the points and then the infractions against our commercial vehicle operators registration so our cbor mm-hmm. um is obviously a concern and and you know i mean accidents happen mm-hmm. it's hard for you to criticize other people's accidents when you make your own and in that yep. case that was you know an accident but uh yeah now, i wouldn't the call only... it an accident it was more so an incident <sighs> It, it was a lack of lack of awareness, lack of paying attention, which is something that can't happen when you're driving a fully loaded tow truck. It, it's, yeah. you know, I, I'm the hardest on myself over it. I don't sit there and go, oh, well, shit happens. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. you got to fuck. You're, you're driving a loaded tow truck. You got to pay attention. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely a wake up call for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably a, a, an overdue one. Right. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while we need that. I, I would have preferred maybe no points in a, you know. I'd pay twice the ticket if there was no points. Yep. <laughs> yep. Go down to Quebec and go like, I will give your province more money mm-hmm. if you pr- if you can just eliminate this side of it. Yeah. How about that? I know you guys need money right now. <laughs> You're crying about immigration in Quebec. <laughs> you could use a couple extra hundred, hundred bucks. Quebec could always use money. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. So anyways, that's the plane guy story. Uh, caught speeding. Now, that being said, it is nowhere near as bad as this poor fella. Well, I shouldn't say poor fella. I think poor fella is giving this guy the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, he's um, not a poor fella. He's a dumb fella. And this is this is clearly me just deflecting my situation to make it that it's not so bad. Um, so <laughs> Well, I could uh, be from, this guy. Yeah. From Peel Regional Police. This tow operator, and I use that term lightly because it's a single rear wheel, probably 3,500 with a rattler. Mm-hmm. Um, was stopped for completely unacceptable driving behavior, traveling at 137 kilometers an hour in a posted 40 zone while mm-hmm. also on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Driver charged racing motor vehicle, stunt driving and careless driving. I didn't know those were three separate charges. I know the careless and stunt is. Mm-hmm. 
License gone, truck impounded. Peel Police, a 27-year-old operator, has been charged under the Highway Traffic Act with speeding, racing, a motor vehicle, careless driving, failing to stop at a stop sign and driving the wrong way and failing to properly wear a seatbelt. Hmm. Hmm. So they called him an operator there. Does that mean he's the owner of the towing company too? Or just yeah, a driver? Under their wording, it's very possible. Yeah. Um, I could buy insurance. Mm-hmm. This is, of course, Toronto. Um, yeah. unfortunately, now that cop is so far up. It, like that looks almost like it was an aggressive, mm-hmm. a, a, aggressive pullover. Um, because mm-hmm. when they put their their push bumper up against your wheel lift, yeah. Um, yeah, they're he's probably pretty pissed. Which I mean, no doubt, a forty zone, which means it's a school zone. Mm-hmm. Right, that is the only place I believe, for the most part, that you see forty Some zones. Some small high communities, in, yeah, high red. Central area, yeah. yeah. 40 kilometers an hour, and he's clocked at 137. Almost 100 kilometers over the speed limit. 97 kilometers over the posted speed limit. Yeah. What's like, that, triple the posted speed limit? 40, 80, 120, it's over that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's over Jesus triple the speed God. limit? Oh, Like, man. what are you doing? I, I know what you're, you're probably doing. You either were out in the London area and just shot at another tow truck driver, or, <laughs> um, you know, a first available MVC came across the air. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think we we fully would to see a killed chasing. Either that, or this guy really had to poop. I mean, yeah. I've really had to go sometimes and had some close calls. They've never resulted in in triple the speed limit in order to do so. No, if I'm like playing peeky boo, I'm like 25, 30 over the speed limit max. Because yeah. if I get pulled over, it's not going to help my situation at all. Yeah, yeah. no, you're just going to play. You're going to lose the game of peekaboo. Yeah. So, but 137 kilometers an hour in a posted 40 zone. That's yeah, that's ridiculous. I have so I'd love to do the conversion. Um, hold on, I will give you for our American listeners um the uh the conversion to that so that we would be the switch equiv- it over to the freedom units yeah the freedom units that would be the equivalent of doing 85 in a 25 wow yeah 85 in a 25 mm. um yeah that's that's absolutely that's yeah that's absolutely unacceptable this guy is absolutely like gives the worst reputation to our uh to our industry and uh i hope you sir never operate a tow truck or a golf cart ever again i think i've said those exact words about previous speeding stories that have come up which they just they tend to always come up i honestly think the let, let's be frank here the criminal justice department in both canada and the united states is overly lax in a lot of things but i'm sorry if you get caught doing 137 and a 40 you should never be able to get a license again period mm-hmm. full stop i think so like I that mean, is it, that's it's a stricter punishment for stunt driving than it is for drinking and driving in ontario currently so yeah. um our our logic on penalties is seems to be a little bit out the window um, especially but, like yeah. once you get up into like rural parts you'll be driving down a winding back road and it'll be an 80, then boom, it drops down to a 60. And when it's an 80, people are normally doing 95, 100, right? Drops yep. down to a 60, you only need to be doing 40 over it for it to be classified as street racing. And yep. there can be nothing around for another 10 kilometers before you get into a little hamlet. Epson. And it's a 60. <laughs> Epson. Yeah. yeah. Remember that town? Yeah, I remember that town. There was no residential reasoning other than old closed schools that that dropped to a 50 Mm -hmm. you didn't need to do 50 for the curves you didn't like because we've all blown through there way quicker than that because again like that was one of those areas where yes a hundred percent there is no but this is in the city in a residential area like there is nowhere that this guy is driving that 137 is legal no for a hundred and some kilometers no. Right to as close as one ten highway. So, like, yeah, there's zero, absolutely zero reason for it. 
But we so, see more and more bad drivers out on the road year after year, and it's kind of frightening. I'm not going to lie. It's frightening. Bad drivers in what way? Like more aggressive drivers? Because bad, just... bad, is, bad is an interesting take because I think yeah. there's a lot more stupid drivers, and I don't mean stupid reckless. I mean, I say stupid, bad stupid. drivers. Be... <laughs> well, yes, there's more stupid drivers out there. There's more distracted drivers. Um, stupid distracted idiotic just don't know the rules of the road don't know common courtesy all yeah, these like things just on... add into bad drivers right mm. you could say a bad driver doesn't know where his vehicle is in the lane yeah right doesn't oh, yeah. know the width of his vehicle uh, yeah. doesn't know where his mirrors are right? doesn't like know how all... to check blind spots and relies on on blind spot detectors exactly um over reliance on rear view cameras can make you a bad driver right not using your mirrors like you're i think saying. that makes you a bad parker not a bad driver well if you get into an accident in a parking lot it's still you're driving a motor vehicle okay fair enough right or splitting hairs yeah but there's so many more incompetent that's a better word to say oh, incompetent yes. it's my favorite drivers. word I know. Just when you call someone incompetent, it just makes you feel so big and the other person so small because it's like a big fancy word. <laughs> Not you're an idiot. No, I, I, you're I wouldn't incompetent. Say it's a fancy word. <laughs> well, it is a fancy word for simple minded folk like I. Okay. Right? That I'm wearing my Canadian by. tuxedo, which is a jean jacket for all you. And audio it's got listeners. more than it's got more than three syllables, so it's a big word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but and it's, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's the testing that just isn't going all the way it needs to be, or if it's just people are just so much more relaxed behind the wheel, and they just don't think of operating a 5,000 pound all the way up to an 80,000 pound object barreling down the road at 100 kilometers an hour, just doesn't think that's a risk anymore because safety has gone so far away in these new vehicles. Yeah. I, I think right? like, I think I think some of it plays into society on the fact that driving used to literally be a privilege. It should still be a privilege. It, I know, but it's treated more like a right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You have the right to take a driving test in whatever language you choose, regardless that the street mm -hmm. signs ain't going to be in that language. Yeah. Right. So I've got a funny story that I can't fully get into quite yet, but um. <laughs> There is, I was at this company for some strange reason, and there is a gentleman who applied to work at this company. He okay. arrived to Canada a week prior. So he's been in Canada a week. He arrived on a tourist visa. Once he got into Canada, he got switched over into a working visa, okay. got his G2 within that week or G1. Okay. He had his buddy come with him to interpret because he couldn't speak a single word of English. Right. And he applied to be this job working in a vulnerable sector with children. Okay. With no driving experience and unable to speak a single word. Of what was his position in this job as driving? Yeah. What, driving a tow truck? No. Oh, okay. So... Okay, so he was going to be transporting vulnerable people yep. and and not speaking a lick of English. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see where there's there's concerns. Like, what happens if you've got to evacuate? How are you going to communicate, communicate. with your passengers? Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. Right? Or if, if somebody has something go wrong, if there's a medical mm -hmm. emergency, how yeah. are you going to communicate with them? Or because with it's okay responders? right now having a translator here with your buddy, but when mm -hmm. you're out on the road, you're going to be by yourself. And you honestly think this is a good career path for you being freshly into Canada. Yeah, no, I can. And, and that's the hard part, right? Because it's, it's almost prejudiced to say that, mm -hmm. um, especially in Canada, because we're all for inclusion and everything else. And don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I, I am very much for inclusion, mm -hmm. but until safety can uh, be met. Yeah. Can, yeah, exactly. If safety standards become an issue, mm -hmm. well, then I have an issue. Yeah, right? I cannot like I said, put... When, I cannot put inclusion above safety. I am sorry, but I no, cannot. No, a hundred percent. Safety has to be at the at the top at all times. Mm -hmm. And no, it is definitely um, a problem. Like I said, the fact that you can have a translator to go do a, a written license test, and mm -hmm. I get it. 
well, without a license, it's harder to get around. Without getting around, it's harder to get a job. And without all the, mm-hmm. and so I get that. Like I want to find ways, but there has to be a limit. There has mm-hmm. to be where safety still outweighs that. Because if you cannot read an overhead highway sign mm-hmm. that is telling you about a possible slowdown up ahead, mm-hmm. right, because of a collision or or whatever the case may be then you know or or you know this lane or is even just only. basic language skills like what happens if he gets pulled over by an officer how is he going to be able to communicate to well that's fine they have translators oh. for that well that's, I, that's the police's problem i wouldn't i guess my concerns. that's not a safety issue yeah like right if you want to make the argument of the safety issue you can make the argument of the safety issue if you want to make the all oh, the cops are going to have to have resources because they're going to have to have translate okay well, that's their problem Right. But no, a hundred percent. If it, it's, it's, you cannot, you know, and I'm not saying you can't have a license. How is he going to read, read a daily circle checklist if he doesn't, if he can't read English? Yeah. I don't know. Can you have a circle checklist in a one of like in another language? Is that accept? Like, I'm, I'm sure you can get them right. Mm-hmm. Like Canada has two official languages, English and French. Yep. Right. And I'm pretty sure I can do a circle check in either one of those. And it's acceptable. I don't know if I could do a circle check in, you know, a, you know, Spanish, uh, Punjabi, uh, any of those things. Um, mm. and it be legal. Okay. I don't, I don't know. And maybe, maybe it know. is, um, or, you know, you just fill one out and you know, you know what a lot of it is. Yeah. Just check the box, right? It's yeah. all digital now. Just check the box. Mm-hmm. Right. Like the, you might not know what the box means. Just check the box. Like we know yeah. that happens. Yeah. Right. There has been, you know, the amount of commercial incidents, <sighs> This has always been such a tough, a tough one. And, and I really try and say this without sounding prejudiced because it is it is solely based on personal experience mm-hmm. um, and statistics based on jobs that I've worked on recoveries that I have done. Mm-hmm. Right. There is a higher percentage of of those that are new. First of all, new drivers altogether mm-hmm. and moreover, so new Canadian drivers. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that with any prejudice. I mean that based on my personal experience yep. in the region in which I work. Mm-hmm. If we went on a grand scale, it, it's probably about 70 to 80% of, of, of commercial accidents in which we encounter mm-hmm. are gentlemen or, or ladies who mm-hmm. English is not a first language. And I'm not saying that's the reason for it, but they tend to be a lot of them. I've seen like, I mean, had their license for a week, two weeks, month, two months, like that kind of scenario. Mm -hmm. But yes, if, 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 you know, for the, for the sake of, of fulfilling the bigots that want to hear me say it less percentage of my commercial motor vehicles that I get in are English speaking or French speaking white individuals. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not without prejudice. It's not prejudice in any way. It's, it's the facts on, on scenarios in which I've worked. Mm -hmm. Um, Somebody can cancel me for that. Knock yourself out. Um, I think a lot of drivers and operators, the States, Canada will agree with that statement. And it's a hard statement to make because you get into that racial area where it is so touchy nowadays. And I'm sure there's, you know, amazing drivers out there. Mm -hmm. There, Hey, don't get me wrong. There is that 20% of dumb French Quebecers that are out wrecking their shit too, right? <laughs> like the, like they're out there, out there too. So, I'm but you also got to think that... how many French Canadians are actually truck drivers compared to, I imagine there's a pretty good, there's a pretty good number of them, but yeah, I mean, French Canadians overall are dying as a, as a society. I mean, Quebec is doing everything <laughs> they can to protect it. Um, nothing against French Canadians. My, I'm partially French Canadian, but mm-hmm. Um, no, like there is a, you know, again, it is, you're right. It's a very hard statement to make because it sounds so prejudiced. And but it, it, again, it's my personal experience. There is mm-hmm. bad drivers of every race, creed, language, everything. There is yeah. good drivers of every race, creed, mm-hmm. you know, and so on and so forth. I don't think that it's a, it's a problem that these people are maybe necessarily bad drivers. It's just, they're inexperienced and the training isn't there. And we are so fast because it's a, a job that we can fill so quickly that we are putting safety standards and that's what this all comes back to mm-hmm. we are lowering our safety standards in mm-hmm. order to appease either a driver shortage mm-hmm. um a uh you know to help drive down the cost mm-hmm. of drivers because when there's a you know a, an increase in an, an excessive of drivers available obviously 
it gives the companies, you know, options to negotiate lower rates, right? Supply mm-hmm. and demand it works mm-hmm. with employees just as much as it does products. Yeah, unfortunately, but that's how it is. And we're seeing um, the effect on the safety of the roads. And, and I mean, you know, just as I said, I need to take personal responsibility for the fact that I'm driving a fully, lo- you know, a loaded tow truck at mm-hmm. speeds in excess of, you know, the posted speed limit. Mm-hmm. Right. Which can be classified as reckless in its own way. We need to take account, you know, accountability for letting drivers who are so inexperienced. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. They have made changes for requiring to get your AZ license. Now you're required to take an eight week course. Mm-hmm. We have seen many instances of, you know, those, those courses have, have been called into question on their validity. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, they're fast tracking people through for a cost and everything else. We're seeing that happen and, and we're just retest, take a random pool of drivers. And I don't care what color language or hat they decide that they want to wear that day, Mm -hmm. take a random pool of drivers and retest. And I am willing to say, if you can do an honest retest without anyone screaming discrimination, Mm -hmm. Right, because so many people are quick to say, you know, call discrimination out now. You will find that we have a very large pool of very bad drivers in this country. I think one of the issues is, is if you look back 20, 25 years, there was no distracted driving. And if it was, it was the odd person looking at a map going down the road, right? Yeah. Reading a book or something. So within the last 20, 25 years, we have come forward so much as a society with so many new gadgets and different things to preoccupy us during while driving which Mm -hmm. isn't a good thing but it's just how it is the problem is is the normal people who are doing most of these trainings are at that age where they've been training for 20 25 years right they're they're getting up there they're Mm -hmm. not necessarily young people Mm -hmm. so they're getting tired they're getting fed up they've repeated most of the same bullshit for years now and it's not bullshit mm-hmm. but i'm just saying to them yeah. going over it day after day it become bullshit yeah we and lose I patience know, with something the more we experience it, it exactly and when i trained for people in a wrecker i always no matter what i do personally i teach them exactly what the book wants them to say because i know myself if I get taught at, let's say, a 5 out of 10, well, I'm going to cut corners down from that 5. But if I get caught, taught at a 10, when I start cutting corners, I might get down to a 5. So if you're <laughs> teaching people just how to get by safely yep. and legally, like the bare minimum, well, they're going to cut corners from that. That's just humans being humans. That's just mm-hmm. how everyone normally is. Yes, well, there is people that follow... Yeah, that's just, there is people out there that will follow it to the tooth and nail every day, and kudos to them. They keep the world going. Mm -hmm. But most people are going to cut corners for whatever reason to make their job easier, faster, just because they're lazy. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. So at least if they get taught at the standard, at a very high standard, at that 10, when they do, hopefully they will still be safe and legal by the time they're done cutting corners. <laughs> but if you teach them over trained to, to compensate, over trained to compensate for the, uh, yeah. All right. Well, that's, right. if you think about just, I brought this up a couple of times, like uh, military training, they grind stuff into your head because they know in a stressful high tense situation, you need to be You're able to fall back on, you're going to cut corners and you're also going to fall back on your training. And if there is no, I really think there should be a winter driving test for Mm. a lot of, especially rigs, like an AZ license, there should be a winter portion of your license. So if you get your license in the summer, it's a temporary license that lasts Mm. for six months and you are required to do another training course in the winter time because how an 80,000 pound truck handles in the dry is completely different to how it will handle in snow. Right? I, and that's yeah, yeah. that's okay. just the climate we live in. In California, no problem. You get your license. You can't leave January. the state. Oh, no, yeah. hey, there's Northern California. Yeah, but Northern majority, California has snow and mountains. Eh? Yeah, I know. 
So let's say Florida. We'll take Florida as an okay. Example. Yeah, if you Better get a license example. in Florida, you're not allowed to leave Florida <laughs> unless you're in a car. Then then knock yourself out because I want your business but, when you get up to Ontario and realize shit, we have snow. So that's the thing where I draw the line though is for people who get a G license. That's that's the minimum. But you've gone for a graduated license, a D, uh, a yep. class five license, class A license, Whatever a higher class them, license. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. You are supposed to be a better trained driver with be able to have more responsibility, more weight, whatever specialty it is, more passengers. You are supposed to be a better driver than the 90% of other drivers on the road. Correct. That's what the training is there for. So you should be a better driver. When you're driving your 4,000 pound car, if you start texting and driving, can you still kill a family of five? 100% you can't. But if you text and drive in an 80,000 pound rig going down the road, it's a lot easier to kill a family of five just because, oh, you moved out of your lane and you squished a car in between your truck and a guardrail. It's a lot yeah. easier to fuck up royally when you're carrying more weight or more passengers or whatever. Yeah, so there like has to be, there has to be a higher standard. And unfortunately, I don't think we're meeting that higher standard anymore. And that's where you're seeing all these more wrecks and all these more accidents happening with bigger vehicles. It doesn't matter who's behind the wheel. It's just the standard of training and the standard that we hold those drivers to on a day-to-day -day basis just isn't there. And I'm not saying more electronic logs. That's not going to help. Paper logs yeah. are just fine. But like, if you see a truck going down the road, swerving in and out of its lane, that guy should go for more retraining and the police should be on that kind of stuff. There should be more retraining courses to where if you have a slight incident or a slight accident, you go for this retraining course, rehabilitation course, like that show, Bad Drivers of Canada, Canada's uh, Worst Driver. Canada's Worst Driver. Yeah. Yeah. Have something like that, not televised or anything, but where you can get that better training. And that training that's required to operate in different scenarios. I'm in if I'm in if we should make a TV show Canada's worst tow truck drivers, and like put that guy that was doing 137 in a fit in a 40 on it, right? Like I think mm -hmm. that could be a, that we could market that Canada's mm -hmm. worst tow truck drivers. Do you have what it takes to be the worst? Are you? A I think it would be more wonder? Canada's worst commercial drivers. Commercial. Nah, I'm, I'm doing. I'm, be doing I'm, pitch, I'm pitching. Bigger I'm umbrella. Pitching, uh, yeah, I'm pitching Canada's worst tow truck drivers. I'm gonna get on the well, phone. Well, we have a smaller pool. Over. Yeah, no, yeah, but there's <laughs> a lot of contestants. Idea. But there's a lot of contestants. Yeah. There'd be so we could at least many get five, six seasons out of it. Oh, a hundred percent. That'd be easy. That'd be easy, <laughs> easily. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I, I like your idea for a retraining. I think a winter retraining or re winter certification, um, would mm -hmm. be great. I know they have implemented things like, um, if you take your test in an automatic, you're restricted to automatics. Now they've, they've started mm -hmm. bringing that down on different classes of licenses. Um, mm -hmm. I believe I know for sure the AZs, the transports it's been in. Um, mm -hmm. and I think they are working on bringing it to the lower class, like the D. Mm -hmm. so it's 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 coming um i had a great i want to get to a quick story out of uh new york uh, i don't know if it was new york yeah it was new york city um but before we do i wanted to post this thing we found on the internet which i thought was hilarious a little lighten up the mood when you accidentally unlock the wrong car on a lockout call okay so and i've done this yep, should you too. offer a discount to the driver of the incorrect vehicle even if they aggressively confront you. <laughs> so this guy has unlocked, a, you know, I was asking if you unlock, and I'm, there's a lot of satire behind this, and I'm sure he's just having a good time mm -hmm. with people. But yeah, if you unlock the wrong vehicle and the guy comes up screaming at you, should you give him a deal on unlocking his car? <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Um, yeah. I think the deal becomes a uh, 100% discount yep. and an apology. Um, I've done it. I've asked, like, I've been in a parking lot where there was two cars. I thought I had the right car. 
mm-hmm. whatever the case was. And I, you know, I'm in a rush. And so I call the guy, yeah, I'll be there in two minutes. Okay, no problem. So I unlock the car and I'm waiting for him. Mm-hmm. And I can't find the keys in the car. I've unlocked it, but I haven't opened the door. Right. So no alarms mm-hmm. going off or anything. And he yeah. pulls up and he's like, that's not my car. My car is over here. Mm-hmm. And I go, huh. And I go, I unlock this car. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you do? I open the door, I hit the lock, and I walk away. <laughs> and it never happened. But yes, yeah. if the customer were to confront me, I think it's only fair that I would give him a discount. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could you imagine I've, somebody trying to charge you for a service? I've done that before. I've showed up at someone's house and for a roadside call to do an unlock. And most of the times there, I just unlock the car, yeah. especially if I can see the keys and then go to the door say, hey, here's your yeah. keys, your car's unlocked. Right. Yeah. I've unlocked the car. The alarm's gone off. I look in. I'm not going to go through the car. So yeah. I'm not going to go unless they're keys. visibly sitting right there. Yeah. Yeah. They're sitting on the seat or on the dash or in the ignition. Cool. I'll grab them, turn the alarm off, unlock the car. The car alarm goes off. They come out, un- unlock the car that I just unlocked with the key fob in their hand. They're like, that's the wrong car. Oh, <laughs> well, now I look like the idiot. Uh, oh, your roadside didn't give me any information on your make a model, or they put it in this vehicle as the one that was actually on the right, call because they've used that before yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is a, that is a good one. I've definitely ran into that situation. Um, so another one I want to get quick, and and we don't have much time left in the episode, and uh, we don't have to debate the story. I don't think there's much to debate. Um, kind of a little bit sadder news coming out of New York City. Um, illegally parked driver allegedly killed by New York City tow truck operator. I don't know if you heard this oh. one coming out of New York. March 17th, oh. a 61-year-old man who was illegally parked outside of a Shell gas station in New York City was allegedly killed by the 30-year-old operator of a tow truck after a dispute, police said Sunday. Officers with NYPD responded to a 911 call of an assault in progress inside the gas station on Clarkson Avenue in the East Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn around 8.45 p.m. on Sunday. Um, This obviously has to be last Sunday. Or that just just happened. Um, The dispute became physical, and the 61-year-old male was punched in the face by the 30-year-old male, causing the 61-year-old male to fall and hit the pavement. Um, police said an ambulance mm-hmm. responded to the scene, transported the victim to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The 30 year old male was taken into custody with charges pending amid an investigation. The identity of both mm-hmm. men have not been revealed. The New York Daily News was the first to report that the victim was illegally parked and in a confrontation with a tow truck driver. Details not included in the police press release. The newspaper noted that the same Shell Station parking lot was also the location of a screwdriver stabbing in July 24th, 2022. I'm not sure how that's related. Um, But yeah, absolute. Either way, there's no nice ending to this story. Um, You know, whether it was a dispute over, you know, we got tow truck operator got in uh, in an argument with somebody who's illegally parked. Push came to shove. Why was the tow truck driver... Why did he go into the corner store where this guy was? We don't know. Okay. There's the, yeah. the relating back to a screwdriver stabbing in 2022. I don't know on how credible the whole, the whole story side of it is, whether he, you know, he had hooked up the car. The guy was harassing me, went into the store. Uh, you know what I mean? And then the guy kept giving him a hard time and he gave him a shot. I, we don't know. Right. This yeah. is, it's pure speculation. Uh, but no matter what the case is, right. Imagine in a moment, a frustration we'll call it mm-hmm. you know or a moment of lack of judgment you take a swing at somebody which is something we we all know nowadays you cannot do mm-hmm. and a harmless someone call it harmless innocent punch and i get canceled for that one too um but you know what i mean like we've we've all been there where we've had a moment of lapse of judgment mm-hmm. and it results in you know something is 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 you know you punch the guy in the face i mean I'll be the first guy to tell you I punched somebody in the face before. It's not my proudest moments ever. I just tried to but, hug your face with my fist. But uh, but imagine, right? Like I I look back at when I was younger and got into an altercation with somebody, and, and took mm-hmm. that route. And and you know that's gonna like regardless. Okay, so even if this guy's not in the wrong and he's not charged, he's mm-hmm. he killed somebody. Yeah. It's a shitty situation to be in, and it's even he shittier has to than, get of course, his hands registered as deadly weapons. But I mean, it's it, it just, again, here's the media portraying this. We don't know the story. We don't know. And it's, 
illegally parked driver allegedly killed by New York City tow truck operator. It was allegedly There's very little killed. Inf- the- allegedly killed. He's he's That's for allegedly. sure killed. He's for sure dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's just allegedly it was the tow truck driver's fault. Yeah. But right, it just goes to show the like the media spin on that, regardless if he's right or wrong. No matter what, he's wrong. You got tow truck in that story, it's never going to be a, you know, um, you know, tow truck driver assaulted by, you know, and we don't know. Again, I can't speculate on either side of it, but I'm willing to bet if it was this kind. You see videos of this kind of bullshit happening all the time. Of there's the repo truck coming by, picking up an illegally Mm -hmm. parked car, and the owner of the car gets on the car, tries to drive it off, tries to get in a physical altercation with the driver, climbing all over the tow truck. Shit like that happens more often than not by the sounds yeah. of, like, from what you see on social media. Of course, you're not going to see the snatch and grabs where, you know, everything goes right. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think with seeing those videos of, oh, you can get your car back if you just insult the tow Put truck driver, you get yeah. in your car and you try to drive it off the tow truck. Yep. Yeah, if you put up a big enough stink, you'll get your way. And yep. unfortunately, we see that a lot in today's society. And that's where shit like this happens, where instead of, okay, man, I'm sorry I fucked up. I'll let you do your job and I'll pay the repercussions. That doesn't happen anymore. It's you're in the wrong, even though you're in the right. But I need to be right all the time. So yep. screw you, tow truck guy. Yeah, so apparently I'm reading on another article. Um, a fight over a towed car turned deadly. Um, the fight started around 845 as a 30 year old tow truck driver attempted to tow Carlisle Thomas's car. According to a police source, 30 year old punched the man in the face, causing Thomas to fall to the ground. Police said he was rushed to the area hospital. Um, again, this was so he was towing the car in an altercation. Like, we don't know what it is. Um, you know, there's, hey, there's one news article that finally says 61 year old father dies after a dispute over New York City parking spot who doesn't, you know, right in their headline, decide to say, you know, oh, no, there was a uh, a tow truck involved. This guy was clearly a, you know, a bad person. But either way, it's a uh, it's a shitty situation. And uh, it doesn't look good mm-hmm. for the industry. It, you know, I feel for the family of the guy who got killed, obviously. It, you know, something. Um, yeah, he came running. He opened the door of the tow truck, and the guy punched him in the head. That's a witness statement from the from the, the story, right? So, so, well, if you say that, you came running to the guy's truck and you open up the door. He doesn't know if you got a knife, gun, or whatever. He's just trying to defend himself, really. That's yep. what it sounds like by that witness statement. Yeah. You, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, unfortunately. Yep. Right? Just so. let the guy do his job and settle it after the fact. That's oh, what they always say. If you disagree with an officer on the side of the road, don't fight with them there. You're going to have a yep. day in court. Yep. It should be the same way with you getting your car repossessed or towed from a parking spot. Yep. It's just so yeah. sad, but true. Sad, but true. So on that sad note, we thank you for joining us for another episode of the Tone Life Podcast. And remember, if somebody comes swings open your door, do not punch them in the head. On behalf of myself, my wonderful co-host, Mr. Toe Man G, we thank you for joining us this week, and we cannot wait to see you again next week. Take care. Doodles.